Hey guys, I am back again. Um, and I'm out of breath because I was trying to hurry and get this done before the sun goes down. Um, and I have this beautiful tree in my background. And honestly, I love, love, love the yellow tree trees and the leaves that are falling all over the yard. It's so beautiful. Um, it's a lot of leaves, but they're so beautiful. And I just love the yellow. It's so pretty. So I thought I'd give you that as the background. So if it's a little darker, it's because it's nighttime. Um, really not. It's like four. But, you know, it's time for the sun to go down. And so I wanted to get this done. But yesterday when doing the video and listening, reading Jesus Calling and reading the Word and spending some time with the Lord, what really stuck out to me was joy. And, you know, <laughs> it's Christmas time. Decorations are coming out. You know, I'm already decorated. And... These little joy things are everywhere because it's a part of Christmas, right? To joy, hope, peace, believe, all those awesome things. And so um, that really has been highlighted in my spirit is joy. And so with joy, you know, the word says in Nehemiah 8.10 that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I'm going to read it. Um, because I think it's really important to kind of read the whole verse or read the whole chapter to get more of a context of what, you know, we're looking at. So Nehemiah 8.10 says, Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. So let's think about that. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So if that's the case, then it makes total sense why the enemy would want to steal our joy, right? Which is what we talked about. He can't steal our promises. He can't really interrupt our life, you know, and the plan that God has for us and the purpose that he created us for. He can't steal that from us, but he can steal our joy. And in John 10, 10, you know, everybody knows that verse. It's very popular. It says that the thief does not come but to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So the enemy is already here to steal, to kill, and to destroy, to destroy our peace, to steal our joy, you know, to kill our our visions for our, our future and for our lives. You know, when John passed away, it was like the vision I had for our family and our future just died with him. And so, you know, navigating through a death of a vision is changes your whole life, <laughs> changes the whole, you know, projection of what you thought was going to happen and how to handle it. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working through the grief recovery handbook and I really recommend it. It's really, it's really been awesome. Um, it's really destroyed or dismantled some lies that I believed about what to say and things like that. But it's really good on how to um, see grief and how to handle grief and how to, you know, talk to someone who is grieving and how not to. You know, it's it's really good. So I suggest you guys get that. But if you think about it, the enemy comes to steal our joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength, right? So he wants us weak. But God already has a backup plan for that. Remember yesterday we talked about how he is made strong in our weakness. So it's okay that we're weak. It's okay that we get weak, that the enemy steals our joy sometimes. It's okay because the Lord is made strong in our weakness. So we come to him, we focus on him, just like we talked about yesterday, and we are rescued again. So um, I have a bunch of scriptures that I feel like the Lord told me to um talk about today and I have a list to make sure I go in order. Um, so the first one was Nehemiah eight ten, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And the second one was John 10, 10. And that is, you know, how he comes to kill, steal and destroy the enemy does, but the Lord came to give us life abundantly. And, you know, we are made strong, um, or he is made strong in our weakness. So in second Corinthians, second Corinthians 12, nine says, and he said to me, and these are in red letters, so out of the mouth of Yeshua, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. 
So, like I said yesterday that Lana Vosser had mentioned that our weakness is like a portal to his strengths. Um, and so we don't have to worry about, you know, succumbing to the enemy's lies and our, our joy being stolen and us becoming weak because God has a backup plan for that. And that's really awesome. The next verse that I want to point out is Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So how do we get that joy? How do we get that hope? How do we live in joy no matter what's going on around us? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is really the answer to everything. I mean, honestly, praying in the Spirit is like your gift. Praying in the Spirit, honestly, praying in the Spirit is like your fix it real quick pill. And it may not even be that your circumstances are fixed, but your the way you see them are fixed. The perspective is fixed. And, and as we grow older, we realize the majority of life is about perspective, right? Um, and so that's a really big helper is the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is where the joy and the hope of the Lord comes from is by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so you ask the Holy Spirit for help. You know, you ask him for joy, ask him for his peace that passes all understanding and his joy that makes no sense. Um, the next scripture I want to talk about is five Thessalonians uh, or first Thessalonians five sixteen, which is one of my favorites, because honestly, I think about it all the time. You know, when we think about what's the, the will of God for our lives, and this just flat out says it, to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ, Yeshua the Messiah, for our lives. This is the will of God for our lives, to rejoice always. And that seems like, oh, I've got to pretend to be happy all the time. That's not what that means. It doesn't mean pretend to be happy. It means ask the Holy Spirit for the joy no matter what's going on. And it says pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean that you can only sit and pray all day long to be in the will of God. That's not what that means. It means throughout the day when stuff's going on, good or bad, when a thought pops in your head that's like, ooh, or even, hey, you know, when a, a bad thing happens to you or a good thing happens to you, when you talk com continually, communicate with the Lord, it's just so much better. Life is so much better. And then in everything, give thanks. This is really hard to do. It's easy to be thankful when good stuff happens. You know, I, we got a good parking spot the other day and we were like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, but when bad things happen and life is hard and it seems like people are letting us down or leaving us or disappointing us, it feels like I can't be thankful for this. Later, you can see how God either protected you or, you know, Romans 8, 28 at it. <laughs> That's what I say. Romans 8, 28 at it. Because, you know, it, it's he works all things together for the good of those who love him or who are called according to his purpose. That's Romans 8, 28. And we're all called. He loves all of us first. And so we just got to love him back. And he makes all things work together for our good. And so he may not have caused the disease. He may not have caused the breakup. He may not have caused um, the bad thing to happen that you feel like was a bad thing in your life. He may not have caused that disappointing thing to happen, but he can make it work for your good. I do not believe that it was God's will for John to take his life. I just don't. I just don't believe that. And it, if other people believe that, fine. Do I believe God, John is in heaven? 100% I do. I believe that. And I feel like God's given me confirmation. And that's my own little personal thing with, you know, me and the Holy Spirit. And that's not for anyone else to decide. And it's not for me to decide anybody else's. So my biggest thing is he took that loss that was miserable and hard. And affected me and my boys and all of his other children and family members and friends. And he worked something good because it's given me a ministry to help other people who have lost people to suicide. Or it's given me a ministry to help other people who have decided they want to take their life. 
or those who know someone who is talking about it or thinking about it or acting like it, I can help those people because I've studied and I've learned the way to do that. And so he has created a whole life purpose for me out of that loss. And that's a Romans 8, 28. I do not believe God caused that to happen. And God worked what the enemy meant to tear me down and take me out. God worked that for his good, for my good. And it's going to be used to grow the kingdom of heaven versus what the enemy meant for it to do. Which takes me to my next verse, which is James 1, 2 through 3. James 1, 2 through 3 is, My brethren, consider it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Uh, one version someone said once was consider it an opportunity for the Lord to show out, which is what I feel like Romans eight twenty eight is all about. Consider this, what, what the enemy meant to take you out as an opportunity for the Lord to rise you up. So that's hard. But I feel like with us seeking the joy of the Lord as our strength, with us seeking the Lord for his strength, for his joy that we are taking care of. So the next verse I want to read is Psalms 27, 6. And Psalms 27 has been, I mean, I could say the whole chapter, and that's not a bragging point. It's because it has been my safety net blanket. It's been my safety blanket since I was a preteen. And it is one thing that I've read in this little book, you know, this little bitty black Bible that I've had forever um, that... I read over and over and over again, and I suggest everybody read it because it's just, it covers all the bases and it's from King David and, and he just knew what it was like to not be perfect, but yet for the Lord, for God to call him a man after God's own heart. I mean, for Jesus to call him this self, the son of David, to claim him, even though he was a hot mess, that's a man I look up to. So Psalms 27, 6 is, And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. It's called sacrifices of joy for a reason. Sometimes it's a sacrifice. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you don't feel like it and you don't want it, but it is the best thing. You know, Chris Pratt did a video about how he was really struggling over something and he didn't really go into detail. I know he got attacked for some sweet post he did about his wife or girlfriend or something. But anyway, he said, you know, I, I knew that getting on my worship music, putting on my worship music and going for a jog in the woods would make me feel better. And I just didn't want to do it. I was feeling funky. I was feeling down. I didn't want to do it, but I did it anyway. So not only the exercise, but the worship music and getting alone with the Lord and he said, all glory be to God, because it was him that fixed my situation and my, mo you know, my, it's the perspective. It's all about what's in here and in here um, that changes what's out here. You know, it's the, the most important thing is your perspective of how you see things. And that is how, you know, seeking the Lord will change it and praying in the spirit will change it. And I know it's getting hard to see me, but I'm trying to get through this I really think it's really important and I just think that this scenery is just beautiful hopefully it will stay up so um offer sacrifices of joy even when you don't feel like it and you will see a massive turnaround you really will the next verse is Isaiah 35 10 Isaiah 35, 10, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The whole point of bringing all these joy scriptures to you is to prove how important joy is to the Lord. How important you having joy is to the Lord. He cares if you have joy. He cares that you're filled with his joy because the joy of the Lord is your strength, sure, but because he wants his babies to be happy. He wants his babies to be joyful. I am so blessed when my babies are joyful. 
when they're full of joy. I am so blessed. I am so thankful. It is so wonderful to get to watch them with that joy on their face. So, and I'm just this imperfect parent, human. Why wouldn't God, the perfect God, be even better? The next verse I want to read is John 16, 22. John 16, 22, therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again and your heart will rejoice and your joy no one will take from you. We need to fight for our joy. And it is a fight sometimes. It's so hard sometimes, y'all, when you're tired and you just don't, you know, there's times when I'm really struggling and I'm sad and I'm down and about something and I'm so tired. I don't have the energy to have someone try to cheer me up. So I don't tell anybody. I don't tell anybody my problems. I don't tell anybody that I don't feel good or that I'm sad or that I'm struggling with something because I don't want to be cheered up. I don't have the energy. But we need to fight for it because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And when we give in to those lies of the enemy and we align ourselves with those lies, we open a doorway for the enemy to attack we give him permission. And I know that's not what we want. We don't want that. But in the moment, it's like, who cares? I'm tired. Let me listen to some Billie Eilish. Let me just feed this sadness and this anger and this disappointment and depression. Let me just feed it because it just feels good. Romans fourteen seventeen is for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is joy from the Holy Spirit. It's so important that it's a part of the kingdom of God that we have joy. That's so important. The last one I want to read is Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, Yeshua, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and he has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It was the joy set before him that he was able to endure what was coming. So when we know hard times are coming, it is the joy of what's coming after that that helps us to endure it. I just believe that the Holy Spirit is how we get that power. And I want to really press and press and press the power of praying in the Holy Spirit in your own precious language that the enemy can't understand and he can't twist. And I pray that you study it. And one day I'll do a video about it. But John Bevere did a pretty good one. It's two, It's like three hours long. It took me a few days to watch it, I think. It was two hours long, something like that. But uh, the sun is going down and it's getting harder and harder to see me on here. But... I think the main point is that the joy of the Lord is worth fighting for. He wants us to have it, and he wants to give it to us freely. We don't have to earn it or deserve it, but we do need to ask for it. Just like faith and salvation, you know, salvation is uh, we're saved by grace through faith, and faith is receiving it, right? we got to ask for it. we got to receive it. But it's just that simple. You know, how wonderful would it be? It'd be like, I just want to ask for it. And here it is. That's the kingdom of God. You ask for joy and there it is. The Holy Spirit will provide it for you. And yes, sometimes we got to fight for it. And it's not super easy and quick, but it's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it. I love you guys. Y'all have a blessed week.